Hey golfers, Michael Geiger with Second Swing here again with Mr. Larry Bobka to talk about a very important subject, Larry. You see so many people each year for fittings. You see all different kinds of people walk in through the door. Today we're talking about, we're answering some of the questions that you at home might have that you might want to consider before you walk into your first fitting. So Larry, first off, if I'm a golfer, should I have should I know my handicap? Should I tell you my tendencies? What kind of information should I have ready uh, at my disposal to give to you, the fitter? Well, when you sign up for a fitting, um, we send you a form. There's kind of an update form that has the information about your handicap, years played, right-handed, left-handed, ball flight, current golf clubs. I highly suggest that you fill that out because that helps us because either at night the day before fittings or in the morning we as fitters always take a look at that you know we look at the updates we look at the people are coming in so the more information I have right off the bat makes it easier I mean it's kind of like going to the doctor going to see a new doctor and not having your medical history right and having him just trying to guess you know hey if you had your hips replaced? Well, you know, what have you done? Right. So I would really like, you know, people, encourage people to fill that out. Okay, for sure. Now, say I'm going in for a driver fitting. Should I have a few brands in mind? How many brands in mind should I have? What, what from a, a brand perspective or a model perspective, what should I kind of bring to you? Well, you know, everybody, you know, you play around to golf and say you got a, a Callaway driver and you hit your buddy's tailor-made driver and you hit it really good come in and tell me that you know take a look at the brands that you're interested in trying you know hey it was on the internet and I saw you know the new Cobra driver I saw that I mean that's information right up front that that helps us make the efficient that make the fitting that much more efficient so I would go ahead and make sure you have that have that list ready mm -hmm. you know I, I you know sometimes customers come in and they kind of apologize because they hand me a list. I'd rather have a list rather than trying to figure out what they're interested in rather than going through a fitting for 45 minutes and then all of a sudden somebody goes, well, hey, I really wanted to try the ping drive. Well, that's information I could have used. Absolutely. So yeah, definitely, definitely have an idea of the things that you want to try or the, the things that, and, and there's no bad questions. I mean, hey, the driver that you might have in your mind might not be the most efficient, but it's always worth it, you know, talking to the fitter about it, whether you hit it or not. Um, yeah, have that, have that ready. Okay, and say, say I'm coming into a fitting in the winter. If I come in in Scottsdale versus Minnetonka, that's gonna be very different because in, in Minnetonka, yeah. I haven't hit balls in two months versus Scottsdale, I'm in my prime. How would you evaluate a fitting where a golfer is coming in during a cold weather season versus the middle of the summer, say? Well, you definitely want to, from a standpoint, I mean, if, you know, hey, it's, it's November 18th and we don't, you don't have a fitting book till January or February and you haven't hit a golf ball, I mean, it, it certainly would help to, to go, you know, to one of the indoor facilities, Braemar or whatever, and hit some golf balls before you come to that fitting. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to come in that rusty into a fitting, that's kind of tough. It's not going to be the most efficient fitting. So I would definitely try to hit some golf balls. But don't make the mistake of the day before the fitting, hitting balls for three or four hours, and you come in so sore that you can't, you can't swing. It's like cramming or, for a test. Like cramming for the test. Or, hey, I just, you know, I went and worked out and I did my heavy lifting day <laughs> at, you know, yesterday afternoon and, and now you got a morning fitting and you can't even swing because you're so sore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would prepare, I would prepare coming in for a fitting just like you're going to prepare for a round of golf. Okay. I mean, if you're going to play an important round of golf, you're not necessarily going to go have a heavy workout. You're not going to not hit any golf balls. Right. You know, so use it. Think about it. If you think about it that way, it certainly makes the fitting that much more efficient. And, you know, I'm going to make it, it's going to make it easier for me to help you. And you're going to walk out the door with a set of clubs that you're going to be really happy with. Okay, so we've covered a lot of the ground in terms of what they should do. What are some, some kind of trouble areas or what, what should golfers not do before going into a fitting? Uh, I think number one is the 
Sunday fitting where you've done eight or ten hours of yard work on Saturday. <laughs> I can't tell you the fittings that have come in and gone, I'm so stiff, I'm so, I can't even swing the golf club. Don't do that. You know, I, I understand you got things to do at home, but you, you have to think about that fitting that, hey, or, well, I'm coming for a fit, I didn't bring my golf clubs. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then we kind of start from scratch. Sure. You know, make sure you bring your golf clubs. You don't have to bring all of them, but if you're getting fit for irons, at least bring your seven iron. If you're getting fit for a driver, bring your current driver, because it's always good to have a baseline. Right. Rather than, you know, if, if you don't have your driver and you're starting to tell me, well, I kind of hit it high, I kind of hit it low, the perspective's a little bit off, because you might hit it, you might think you hit it high, but the guys you play golf with all the time hit it about 10 feet off the ground. Sure. And your 20 feet off the ground looks, oh my gosh, I hit it so high. <laughs> right. You know, so there's a perspective. It, it just really helps to have the current clubs that you're playing when you come in because then we can really, we can really zero in on, on the ball flight and how we're going to get you a better golf club. Excellent. Well, Larry, that's outstanding advice. And we recommend golfers at home. Like Larry said, there's no bad questions when you walk into a fitting, but pay attention to this advice and uh, schedule a fitting with a second swing fitter as soon as possible and uh, reap the benefits of more distance, straighter, straighter shots, and more putts made on the greens. Larry, thank you again for your time. You're welcome. Cheers.